everyone. Today, I wish to introduce to you the concept of interbeing, an incredible country that embodies it and how it might shift our approach against climate change. Just recently, we were introduced to the idea of creation myths in the unit of Ishmael, the idea that we live by a story, the taker story. That story now has a name, the story of separation. The story of separation is one embedded in the logical minds of our society, a concept brought to awareness by this man here, Charles Eisenstein. He said, the dominant culture that we all live by tells a story that you are a separate being among other separate beings in a universe that is also fundamentally separate to yourself. If the universe is indifferent to you, then you need to be in control. You wish to have control over other separate beings, over nature. It is because of this need for control that we now face climate change. It is why we have the dominant cultural belief that the world belongs to man. This belief in separation and ownership is unsustainable. Represented by the Taker Thunderbolt, we are indeed in free fall. The story of separation is a hopeless situation. But there is a second story an older story, one that we've forgotten, one entirely separate from the story of separation. Interbeing is the leader story, and it is full of hope. Interbeing is a term coined by Vietnamese monk and peace activist Thich Nhat Hanh. In the story of interbeing, mankind is a part of nature, not the ruler of it. In the story of interbeing, the earth is not a resource not something in place to sustain mankind, but rather a community of beings that we are all intimately connected to. Interbeing is an expansion of oneself to include all beings, to include the earth. It's really a story of love. When you fall in love with someone, your happiness is their happiness. You are no longer a separate self. But interbeing means more than that. It means more than interconnection or interdependency, terms which still suggest separate selves having relationships. Interbeing is more of an understanding that we are relationship. That my existence is tied to your existence. My well-being is intimately connected with yours, to the river, to the mountains, or to the well-being of that tree outside. This is the Lever culture. Daniel Quinn, Daniel Quinn wrote, Levers are the endangered species most critical to the world. This means that we must learn from the cultures that haven't forsaken their ancestral teachings. Because indigenous peoples, no matter how different in culture and belief, all share interbeing. In their cultures, it isn't absurd to ask, what does the river want? What does the mountain think? Recognizing nature as a being, this way of life is embodied by the small Himalayan kingdom of Bhutan. Majority of Bhutan's population practice Tibetan Buddhism, a religion which believes the land is sacred. Valuing nature as a sacred being has not only set the ground for a flourishing and rich culture, but it has led this small country to be an exemplar of how to properly combat climate change. Bhutan is not only carbon negative, but their animals roam free. They're home to one of the few remaining biodiversity hotspots in the world. And they annually set aside resources each year to pre prevent poaching. Currently, 72% of their land is under forest cover, and they have pledged that 60% will remain under forest cover for all time. Bhutan is living in the story of interbeing, something we all need to learn if we are to truly combat global warming. If we change the way we see nature, not as a resource we can milk, but as a living, breathing organism, then and only then might some real change be made. Biologist Chris Schneider said, one of the most important ideas that Darwin had was that all living things are related. How can you realize that you are a part of this single tree of life and not be fundamentally moved by that? The story of separation is what made us systematically forget that nature is where we all originated, while the story of interbeing will be what is what will re reconnect us with this fundamental truth. So while interbeing is a story of love, separation is a story of indifference.
It is from this indifference that we must shift out of and learn a different way of seeing the earth. And it is with this new perspective that we can change how we fight global warming. But how exactly does this work? How might understanding interbeing affect our outcome on climate change? Well, the truth is, we've cut our tree count in half. We've turned vast areas of each country into desert. We've diminished a lot of the ability that nature has to bounce back. That perseverance, that integrity, the homeostasis of nature can only be restored through respect. Respect for the environment and for all of those that live within it. Respect and recognition that our life, our species are just another piece of the puzzle to the diverse and complex balance that is nature. Understanding that our existence is tied to the mountaintops being leveled for mining, to the forests being burnt for cattle herding, and to the ecosystems being destroyed by pollution. Eisenstein said, if we think about how to make the earth more resilient to mankind's manufactured pollution, rather than how to eradicate our emissions, we might make some real change. Rather than making up for carbon emissions through technology, our first priority should be naming places like the Amazon and the Congo sacred. Regenerate and heal the plants and soil that have the natural ability to take in huge amounts of carbon from the atmosphere. We need to reach a point of humility that recognizes that nature is an extension of ourselves, not something we rule, not something we are separated from. The sooner we all recognize that, the sooner we start properly fighting climate change. Thank you.